what's going on? For those of y'all who don't know, my name is Stafford Beats, and these are just some of my rules for creative success. Um, I learned a lot of these from my experience with music, but after trying a lot of fields and talking to a lot of people who are in other fields, I feel like these kind of apply to everybody. Let's get straight into it. The first rule to being successful in a creative industry is not to get too caught up in the money. A lot of people will throw away opportunities in order to get money, and a lot of times it's just not worth it. Uh, I've seen people throw away opportunities because somebody didn't want to give them like $20, and now they have one less thing to add to their portfolio. You know what I mean? So it's like, if you're just starting out with making beats and you want to send a rapper some beats and you don't have any experience, you don't really have any songs out with anybody, it's not super worth it to be like, yo, I need 20 bucks for this beat or you can't use it. Like it's more worth it just to send it to them and hope they make a song. Now, once you've established yourself enough, and again, this goes for anything. It could be photography, music, whatever it may be. After you've established yourself and you've built a portfolio and you have work that is worth paying for, that's when you should start thinking about charging. But at the end of the day, even somebody like myself who is pretty successful with music will still find opportunities to do things for free just for the sake of building my catalog, building up my portfolio, or just getting a cool song in with somebody. Money usually won't be the determining factor on whether or not I work with somebody. It can definitely be tough to figure out when you should start charging for things. Another thing to think about is really like the perspective of like how much money you're getting. Is it gonna be enough to actually make you a living or is it just gonna be like a little bit on the side? If you get super caught up about 20 bucks, you gotta think how many times you have to make that 20 bucks for it actually to be worth anything. Cause if you sell five of that thing in a month, you make a hundred bucks. What's a hundred bucks, you know? That ain't shit. Of course, like when you're just starting out, it can seem like a lot, but it's not worth throwing away opportunities that could last a lifetime. So just consider that. I'm not saying don't ever charge, but start off doing things for free and just build up your portfolio as much as possible. My second rule for success in a creative industry is to know that there's not gonna be one thing that makes or breaks your career. Although there's a lot of people who may seem like they have an overnight success story or had one song blow up and now they're super famous or whatever the case may be, it's never overnight. You always have so many other things that lead up to that moment. You have a lot of other opportunities. You'll have a lot of accolades that all kind of build up into this being that you become as a creative. And the reason you wanna keep this in mind is because sometimes there's gonna be somebody who tries to sell you on an opportunity or there may be some kind of opportunity that you miss out on and you think like, this is the only way I'm gonna be successful. This right here will make my career. And I see this all the time with people who see like Spotify playlists, for example, or have a really good ad or something like that. And they think that being really successful in this one thing is gonna mean your whole career is set, but that's never the case. Everything is a stepping stone to get to where you ultimately wanna be. With that being said, you really just don't wanna to stress too much over every single opportunity. There's gonna be some that you have to miss out on, and there's also gonna be equally as many that you get to be a part of. It's also important to know this because as you continue to build up your achievements, you're gonna know that even though maybe you just got a Billboard number one song, that's not gonna be your end game, right? When you get a Billboard song, it's not like, okay, that's it, I'm done producing now. No, that means, that means you gotta start going harder. You should be setting goals to achieve these milestones, and when you achieve these milestones, think about what move is next. Think about what next thing you can do to be even bigger and better, and provide more to the community, add more value to the world, and keep building up like that. My third rule is always, always, always experiment. And this is such a huge thing. I mean, it's probably one of the most important things for longevity. And that's really something that you have to focus on as a creative because creative industries are always changing, right? Especially music. So for all my people watching right now that are into music, just know it changes so fast. I've only been in this industry for a few years and in those few years, I've seen a stupid amount of changes. There's so many things that have shifted and become completely different. Like sending loops is so much different now than it was like three, four years ago. So always be prepared for these changes. And by experimenting and trying new things and new processes, you kind of get your mind used to always staying on top of changes. This could mean something as simple as using a different software. It could mean 
you're trying a new tool, you're trying a new asset pack. It could be, you know, for producers, it could be a new sound kit. For videographers, it could be a new video effect kit, or maybe you're collabing with somebody who you wouldn't normally collaborate with. Um, but always try new things. Figure out different ways to achieve the same effect that you already know how to do. Because what if that one thing changes, right? You can't just be stagnant forever. Unfortunately, I know some producers who kind of got stuck in whatever generation they came up on. So it's like, they're sitting here making beats that sound like they're from 2016 in 2023. And people are sick of that sound. It's like, that might still be the thing that you're best at, but if you get into a session and somebody needs something that sounds like a 2023 beat or even a 2024 beat, they're not gonna be able to do it because they're so used to their old ways or they're gonna use somebody else's setup and they're not gonna know what to do. So don't let yourself fall victim to habit. It's a really dangerous thing. And in any creative industry, it can be the killer for longevity. You could be super successful for a couple years and then fall off because you're not getting used to the changes. One example of this that's happening right now is threads. I'm sure you've all seen threads. I'm sure you've seen the people who are like, oh yeah, that's too many social medias, I don't wanna be part of it, blah, blah, blah. Look at TikTok. Everybody thought TikTok was so weird and corny at first, but now it's one of the biggest things in the music industry. I mean, if you're not popping on TikTok, a label's probably not gonna pick you up anymore, or you're not gonna see as much success. All these other music promo forms are dying out, and TikTok is taking over, and it created all this opportunity for short form content that is changing people's lives now. So that's just one example that's happening right now. It's like, you never know when the next threads is gonna be super important to the music industry. So just remember, experiment as much as you possibly can. I cannot stress this one enough. Rule number four is to never lose faith. It sounds corny, but I'm so serious. Every time that you feel like giving up, you're probably right on the verge of something huge or something that's gonna be at least beneficial to your career. I know that there's been a lot of times for me personally where maybe I felt a little bit burnt out or maybe I felt like I needed a break or whatever, but it's in those times that if you allow yourself to keep pushing and you just say Fuck you to your mindset and just keep pushing forward, that's when you're gonna see the most success. Because if you can train your brain to be able to work even when you're not motivated, it's huge. Like, you need that. You have to learn to be able to do things even when you don't want to. Again, don't get caught up in the numbers and the money and everything like that because that can really deteriorate your mindset. Like, especially if you have a really dry month. I mean, that happens to me all the time. I have so many different things that I'm doing right now, right? I run the Producer Crate, which is my website where I sell sample packs and drum kits, and I sell beats, and I make videos for people, and I do YouTube content, and I do all these other things. And sometimes there's a high month or a low month, right? If it just happens to be a low month, I can't get caught up in the numbers because I already know that I'm doing so many great things right now and at the end of the day, I'm still gonna be successful. But if I were to get too caught up in those numbers, when I have a low month, it's gonna seem like the end of the world and I'm probably not gonna give it my all. When I have a low month or I have a month where things aren't feeling right, I just push myself to go a little bit harder. And you don't have to get this confused with like, oh, you have to grind 24 seven, you can't take breaks, blah, 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 motivation, bullshit, no. It's not like that. At the end of the day, you wanna pace yourself in a way that works for you and just make sure that however it works best for you, you're staying disciplined. If you can keep yourself disciplined and you can put in work even when you don't always feel like it, that's gonna be game changing for you. One way I really like to put this into practice because I know a lot of these tips can seem great, but then you're like, okay, how do I actually apply it? Well, for this specifically, I've got an exercise and you gotta try it next time you feel burnt out. So anytime I'm not feeling motivated and I don't wanna make beats, I make myself sit there for 30 minutes at least. You can change this number if you want. It could be 15 minutes, it could be 20 minutes, it could be an hour, whatever you're comfortable with. But for me, it's 30 minutes. I'll sit there and I'll try to make a beat for 30 minutes. And if at the end of the 30 minutes, I still don't feel like it, I'll stop, I'll put it away, I'll walk away, I'll do something else. Maybe I need to take a break for a couple of days. Maybe it's something else. Maybe my mind's just not in the game right now. But I put in that 30 minutes, which means I didn't do nothing that day. And honestly, a lot of the times when you just sit there and do it for 30 minutes, it becomes so much easier and you're gonna wanna keep working. And that's usually what happens with me. A lot of times it'll all be in my head, right? 
I'll just be thinking about the process about making beats and I won't actually be doing it. And I get caught up in the mental state of it and it makes me feel like I don't want to do it. But as soon as I sit down, I put my phone away, I put other distractions away and I just make beats for 30 minutes. By the end of it, I'm like, okay, let's go make some more. Let's work on something else. Let's keep going. Because at the end of it, you know, at least you have something accomplished. And finally, my fifth and final rule for creative success, you never, ever, ever want to stop learning. This kind of goes hand in hand with the not getting complacent thing and not just sticking to one method all the time. But I really have to double down on it. Don't ever stop watching tutorials, learning from other people, getting advice. No matter how big or small you are, you can always learn something from everybody. And that's the mindset that I stick with all the time is literally every single human being on this planet knows at least one thing that you don't know. Which means, I don't know how many people there are. Hold up, let me, let me find out. Look at that, okay. You can't see, but it's 7.8 billion, right? That means there's 7.99999 billion things that you don't know, at least. And that's not including the more than one thing that people know that you don't know. There's things that I learned from people who have like 50 followers on Instagram about making beats that I never would have figured out on my own. Our civilization is built on learning from each other. If every single person did not learn from each other, we would be so much further behind in society. That's why I never gatekeep any information and I try to be as open and honest as possible about anything that anybody asks me, especially when it comes to like creative success. If I'm teaching you all the things that I spent a lot of time learning, then it's gonna skip you ahead so you don't have to learn those things. And then you move on and you teach somebody all the things that you know. So based on my experience and your experience, it just compounds and it keeps going like that. So I hope that you keep that mindset as well. Whatever sauce you learn, share it with the world let people build upon it but those are my five creative rules to success and i hope you learned something just to summarize what we talked about one don't get too caught up in the money learn when to monetize and when not to two there's no one thing that's going to make or break your career everything is a puzzle piece and you need to just keep building up keep grinding and keep going hard number three experiment as much as you possibly can always try new methods number four Never lose faith, don't give up on yourself, keep pushing, especially if it's something that you feel like you really want, you just have to stay dedicated. Don't ever give up, because you're on the verge of something great. And number five, never stop learning, and make sure that you always remember that you can learn something from literally every other person. Make sure to drop a comment and let me know what your favorite tip was. If you've got any questions, feel free to either comment or DM me, and I'll do the best I can to get back to everybody. Other than that, I would really appreciate a like and a subscribe. Thank you so much for watching, and I'm going to catch you next time.